Rightio, here we're doing a calibration of a generic type NTK consumer grade sensor versus a laboratory grade NTK sensor. And this is important to be done because these sensors come fitted with a factory calibration resistor inside them. However, the Cyvex ECU doesn't use that and there's a good reason for it. The calibration resistor just does a gross compensation across the full span of the sensor and it's not very accurate. Anyway, what we do is we set up the two sensors in a common chamber. We sample a gas. We do our output from our NTK reference meter, which uses the lab grade sensor. And in this case, we're using a LZAO9 sensor, which is a wider span than the conventional cheaper ones that other companies use. And what we have here is a calibration curve. And you can see the first few ranges that we've done here and how much it's out by. So it's basically reading exactly the same. I'll do a different recording of the actual screen of the software so it's a bit easier to view. But anyway, what we end up with is once they're fully calibrated is a proper sensor with a unique serial number which is effectively just the date that it was calibrated and these are done to within plus or minus 0.25 of a percent of an actual reading all the way from 5 lambda down to 0 0.5 lambda and we fit them out with a DTM connector and they're ready to go and they'll do the same job as a thousand dollar sensor but they need to be calibrated first. Hopefully you've found this interesting and I'll put up a little bit more detail of the process we go through in the screen. All right, this is our screenshot view of SCAL. And what we have here is looking at the Lambda sensor linearization table. We have a couple of gauges displayed in a graphical form or trace view form in the bottom half of the screen. You can see a lambda lab error, which is simply a comparison of the lab grade, um, lab grade NTK sensor versus the consumer grade one. And if you look up to the top section of the graph, you'll see a trace indicator of where the sensor signal is going and essentially we're trying to get it over the top of one of the calibration points <clears throat> takes roughly uh, a minute or so for things to stabilize once you do a change to the mixture inside the gas chamber you see there we've got an error of roughly zero percent the two figures read about the same so what we've done here now is we've done a mixture change inside the chamber and you'll see the trace curve moving over and it comes to the next point which is the 4.379 volt input point we can get it right on it or iterate between the two it's not really that important when we first do this linear linearization of the out of the box sensor which we don't know we do roughly about 20 sample points through the full span of the sensor curve and then we'll do a line fit or curve fit with a polynomial generating the curve that you see there on the screen then we'll get rid of those points and we'll manually do each individual point on its own. You can see here we're doing a correction. <clears throat> we're adding roughly 1% to the point to get rid of the error. We're waiting for it to stabilize back down. And then once things are stabilized, we look at the Lambda Lab error down in the, in the bottom here. You can see I'm moving to it right now. We do a little adjustment to the multiplier and then we'll activate it and then that'll bring the error to 
0%, which means they're reading the same between the lab grade sensor and the consumer sensor. <clears throat> and this is the process of what we go through. It, it takes all up to do a full span, probably 45 minutes an hour. And then we repeat that two or sometimes three times over, over various days to make sure that the calibration's perfect. And you just keep repeating the process. So now we'll go up to the next voltage input range, let things stabilise, and apply the correction again. And it's as simple as that.